Reverend Dr. Greg Arabo presents. Oh, there is a fountain. Who is the king? His name is Jesus. Oh, yeah. there is Hope for the nations. You may be at the breaking point of your life. God will never allow you to have a breakdown. There is hope in Christ. Communicating divine truth with an accent of love. Bringing hope to our generation. Impacting men with the spirit of excellence. Bringing divine healing to the whole man. Teaching all nations the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be speaking to you on living a fulfilling life free of murmuring and grumbling. Can all of us say one together? Living a fulfilling life free of murmuring and grumbling. Can we say it again? Father, we thank you for the opportunity given to us to worship you, to glorify you, to exalt you, to magnify you, to lift your holy name. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, your presence will be upon this world. Lord, that it will bless your people. We pray, Lord, your mercy will reach out to our listeners all over the world. Those hearing this word on television, on radio, in their private rooms, in their cars, Lord, we will receive blessing and anointing from the presence of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. My test is going to be on Philippians chapter 2, and I'm going to read from NIV, beginning from verse 12. I want to first of all focus on why murmuring and grumbling is not biblically accepted. And spiritually not very good for you or psychologically damaging then I want to look at how we can live a fulfilled life how we can really, really live out a fulfilled life in Christ and as we are coming towards the end of the year when men are going to be looking at their life and say what have I achieved in this year why have I not got what I want you and I can suddenly and strongly believe we can live a fulfilling life. 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who walks in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing or murmuring or agitation so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a crooked and deprived generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out the word of life, in order that I may, may boast on the day of Christ, that I did not run in vain or labor for nothing. You see, if you look at life generally, somebody will say that some people start life by crying live life by complaining and die disappointed. Is only what you find out. They get life by crying, live life by complaining, all around them always complaining, and they end up with life by what? Dis disappointed. Oh, this is so bad, the way this life ended up. 
Murmuring is particularly very bad in scripture because whenever we murmur and complain, we assume that God is not involved in the affairs of men. The psalmist says, once have I had it, second have I spoken to me that power belongs to God. David says that God is the governor of the nations. And sometimes when you are murmuring and grumbling about things around you, you may indirectly be murmuring and grumbling against God who designs life in order. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10.10 10, that they do not murmur as they did murmur and they were destroyed or killed by the destroying angels. Murmuring is quite, it's also very bad because it is very infectious. When you have people around you who murmur and grumble and complain, they spread that spirit around. They allow people around them to feel that same spirit. And before you know, a woman who grumbles at home spreads to the husband, the husband to the children. A boss is always grumbling, spread it to his workmate. A pastor is always grumbling, spread it to his church. A leader is always grumbling, spread it to his nation. A manager is always grumbling, spread it to his establishment. And then by the whole atmosphere is filled up with people who are complaining and murmuring. Murmuring and grumbling has a very bad thing it does to our self-image. See, our self-image is what keeps us, makes us what we are. How do you feel somebody stepping into your house and saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and sits down, and from morning to evening, the person is complaining about everything? Or somebody gets into your house, uh, to, your, to your office, all of you are happy and joyful, and then suddenly he sits down there, he's grumbling about everything. How do you feel? It damages your self-image. It demeans you. And not only does it demean you, it demeans all those around you. And before you know, wise men soon begin to avoid you. Murmuring also is a sign that we are irresponsible. Because God kept us in this world to be responsible individuals. We are kept here to right wrongs. We are kept here to fix problems. We are kept here to find solutions. We are kept here to think about possibilities. We are kept here to light darkness. Paul was telling us that don't murmur and argue. Why? Because you should be like the sons of God that lies light in the darkness. You come to your place of work and these are not working well. Don't begin to orchestrate the obvious. Begin to fix the problem. You come and see things are not working around you. Don't begin to tell us God is not interested in a journalist who re-echoes what is going on. But in a Christian who solves the problem. Jesus Christ did not come complaining about the world. He said, I did not come to condemn, but I came to what? Restore. It was a redemptive God. And the same spirit you and I have. And so when you complain and murmur, you will always be irresponsible. The simple way of knowing a child who is irresponsible is how much he murmurs when he sends an error. Simple. When you are told to do something and you murmur and grumbling, it's a very true sign of irresponsibility. No one can ever achieve the highest of his calling or anybody who can ever be put, put into the highest responsibility who lives life grumbling and murmuring. We are called to see possibilities. So murmuring is a sign of irresponsibility. It's a sign you are saying, God, I'm not responsible. And I think one of the things I realized that we should also think about murmuring is that murmuring is a sign of ingratitude. The Philippian writer, Paul told the Philippian people that it is God that worked in you both to will and then to do of his good pleasure. Jesus Christ once say, said that my father works and I also work. Now if you, mean, if you believe that God is at work, 
and then God is working. And so don't be so quick to end up what God has not finished with yet. Don't put a full stop where God has put a comma. Or close the chapter when God is just trying to go to the next verse. And so everyone who murmurs has a spirit of ingratitude. And the Lord explained to me hypothetically like this. How do you feel if your child comes to you? Anytime he comes to you, he's murmuring. And the Bible says the conversation of our mouth before God is even more important than our prayers. He said, Lord, whosoever ordered his conversation aright shall see the glory of God. Murmuring assumes infallibility. You see, man is fallible. Man has problems. The world is bent on problems. The world is in problems. I just imagine if those people who saw the darkness of this world, we're all murmuring about darkness, won't get light. You know? Or those who murmur about mosquito, we never have got the cure to mosquito. Or those who murmur the fact that God did not create houses, we never had bricks erected. Or grumble that there were so many rivers, we never had bridges. Man is not infallible, but God has put man here to make a difference. You see, I only say that sometimes people murmur because they have what I call the, the supposed mentality. Things are supposed to be like this. Things are supposed to be like this. Things are supposed to be like There is nothing supposed to be like that. You must live life the way it is, manage it, and conquer them. My husband is supposed to be like that. It's not, it's not supposed to be. Or my wife is supposed to be like that. Anything supposition is not right. He is what he is. And so anyone who has a supposed mentality can always be grumbling. Nigeria is supposed to be. Why Nigeria is not supposed to be like that? Nigeria is Nigeria. Niger is not supposed to be like that. Niger is what? Niger. Guyana is not supposed to be like that. Guyana is Guyana. It's what it is. Let me ask you a very simple question. If God was to tell you to write your topography in advance, what would you put there? Open the book and tell you, my friend, write your topography. Write it down. What do you think about? You find out that by the time you are finished scripting your autobiography and ending up, you realize that there are so many gaps and so many empty spaces that needs to be filled up. You see, God has not promised us that he's going to lead our life the way we want it. No. He has only told us he's going to live a life the way he has willed it. But he assures us that it will turn out well. And so a man who grumbles always wants God and that's why those who are very great minds, thinking minds, they want to create a God after their image, as my son said some time ago, rather than align our own lives to be carved out after his own image. And so the best we can do for ourselves, the best we can do for our generation, is as much as possible to flow into the plan that God has got for us. And flow right there. Not God, what I want, but God, what you will. But can I now look at the other side of this world? And can I say that if you and I have formed this chronic habit of murmuring and grumbling, if you and I have come to any particular place and see it is our plight to highlight the problems, maybe for this, as we are ending 2010, please just decide that you are going to stop murmuring you are going to stop grumbling. Just decide that you have been placed to do something that is different. Just decide that, God, I'm going to make a difference to the things that I murmur and grumble about. More so if you have been murmuring and grumbling about your life because you are comparing your life with somebody else. Because you think your life is supposed to be like somebody else. Maybe you must decide this morning or those of you listening to me at any time zone, you are listening to me, that you are not going to murmur. Because first of all, murmuring is big sin. And anybody who murmurs will destroy himself 
destroy the body of Christ and destroy his family. A father who murmurs destroys the joy of the family. A mother who, a mother who murmurs destroys the joy of the children. A leader who murmurs will never take the, the, his institution to where A pastor who murmurs and grumbles will never advance. Man is created as an architect working with a master architect. But you see, I also feel that we should not murmur and grumble because of something. The one, because God is not thoughtless when it comes to us. God is not thoughtless when it comes to us. God is not a moron. The whole concept of God's will is not spiritual stupidity. The whole concept of the fact that I am leading you is not foolishness. God has the highest thoughts regarding your life. Jeremiah echoed long ago that he has good thoughts regarding you. And these thoughts are good thoughts to bring you to an expected end. And I want you to recognize that all your crooked and rough pathways Behind those crooked and rough pathways, God is orchestrating a master plan. I can tell you what many saints in the Bible have had. Paul, David said, I was young, I am old, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor he sit begging bread. God is behind the so-called rough places, the so-called crooked places, because